Brace yourselves, gun control is incoming. President Biden said a few days ago that he wants Congress to enact some common sense gun reform in the interest of public safety because they know what's best for you and I, right? And they say elections have consequences and you wanna know something? I totally believe it because look at what we're up against right now. And you can sit there till you're blue in the face and you can say, oh man, there was election fraud, it was rigged, he's not the true president. Yeah, okay, whatever makes you sleep a little better at night, bro. But at the end of the day, he's still the president, Democrats still control the House, and they have the tie-breaking vote for the Senate. So I think it's a better use of time to actually kind of band together, talk about what it is they're going to do, try and bring people over to our side so we can fight back against it, rather than just, you know, screaming to everyone in our echo chamber about how this election was unfair. Just a thought. Will it work? I don't know. But moving forward, let's talk about what these clowns are trying to pass. So Biden calls on Congress to ban assault weapons and institute other gun restrictions. You know it's never one. It's always a bunch. So this comes on the uh, anniversary of the Parkland shooting. So that was a high profile event in uh, Florida. I think it was three years ago. A lot of innocent life was lost and for no reason whatsoever, right? Innocent life shouldn't be lost. I don't think that that's a controversial thing to say. But why did Democrats use this argument? Well, because it appeals to people's emotions and they're allowed to stand on the graves of dead Americans. But can Republicans do that? If you recall a few years ago, Donald Trump, someone, we had an American citizen that was killed by an illegal immigrant. And he tried to say, hey, this is why we need to pass some stricter border policy, some immigration reform. And what was he met with? Well, first and foremost, you're racist, but you already knew that, right? They've been telling us that for the past like 25 years about him. But what did they say more so was, nope, it's not all immigrants. You're just picking the worst examples to try and pass policy. So would I say, oh, 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 are you doing the same thing now? Trying to demonize uh, like tons of gun owners? And to which they'll obviously they're either going to say nothing, they'll say shut up racist, or they'll say no, 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 all gun owners are bad. <sighs> Democrats, right? So here's what President Biden said that he wants Congress to do. He wants them to pass laws requiring background checks on all gun sales, ban assault weapons, high capacity magazines, and eliminate immunity for gun manufacturers. And let's kind of talk through this because uh, these people have, I mean, part of me says they have no idea what they're talking about, but the other part of me realizes that these people know every damn bit of what they're talking about and they're purposely misleading people to push through their agenda but that's for another time so let's go through the first one uh requiring a law uh to require background checks on all gun sales <sighs> if you've ever purchased a firearm you know you have to use a background check you have to submit for a background check 4473 it goes to the next instant background check system you pass green light you don't pass red light that's all there is to it if somebody wants to hit up their buddy and say, hey, let's not do the legal paperwork to uh, trade firearms or something like that, does it happen? I'm sure it does. Can you actually implement a law or a policy that can regulate that? Well, the only thing you can really do is make this a full-on police state, which first and foremost, I'm told that police officers and law enforcement are racist, but now I guess because they're gonna be used to the Democrats' advantage, that they'll be good, but I don't know, right? That's just, <laughs> we could just talk about that another time. But seriously, you, the only way you're gonna actually uh, regulate that is if you make this a full-on police state. I don't think anybody wants that. So that's just a talking point, get lost. Next, we wanna talk about banning assault weapons. Assault weapon, made up media term just to appeal to people's emotions, the whole scary black rifle, right? Here's what actually exists, an assault rifle, which means every time you pull the trigger, you might get three rounds because it's capable of burst mode, or if you pull the trigger, it gets full auto mode, which means it'll empty the magazine. What do you and I own? Semi-automatic firearms. Each time you pull the trigger, you get one bullet. It might look the same, but it doesn't function the same. Are there people that have assault rifles, like legitimate ones? Absolutely, they have a ridiculous license for it. It's highly regulated, it's highly expensive. So it's not owned by the masses. That's my view on assault weapons. High capacity magazines. I know a hell of a lot about this. I live in the state of New Jersey, which, you know, they don't trust individuals with their liberties. Here is a standard looking magazine. It doesn't hold 30 rounds though. It's pinned at 10. You might even be able to kind of see, I forget, it's a little bit under that ridge, but um, this is only capable of own, or holding 10 rounds. The reason why I like these is one, it looks better in the rifle, but two, it actually gives you something to grab onto. The mags that are actually just 10 rounders, right? If they're like that, there doesn't give you a whole lot to grab onto. Not a whole lot sticks out of the mag well. Anyway, high capacity magazines. Let's chat about that for a little bit. There is literally no difference between someone that a good person that owns a 10 round mag and a good person that owns a 30 round mag. 
Why? Because they're a good person. They're not going to do anything bad with it. So in the state of New Jersey, other states that have this same particular policy, maybe it's going to be in all 50 states if this passes through. You know, if somebody owns a 10 round mag, it's the insinuation that if you now own a 15 round mag, ooh, the devil is just going to get inside you and you're going to want to go out and commit tragedies. It's ridiculous. If we actually promote good people to own firearms, it don't matter if they got 10 rounds, 30 rounds, or 100 rounds. They're not going to do anything bad with those particular firearms. Stop buying into this BS that if you have a high capacity magazine, you're automatically a bad person. Moving on, the last one, eliminate immunity for gun manufacturers. This is a fun one because they know exactly what they're doing in this one. They want to make it to where if a firearm is used, you know, to uh, for a horrific act and a lot of uh, life is lost, right? It's a misuse of their product. They can be held civilly liable. So people can sue them to say someone misused your product. Wow. Do you, can you think of any other area in the market where somebody can get sued for the misuse of their product? Obviously not. The reason why they want to pass this through is because this is a back uh, backdoor way of them banning guns. You know what's going to happen if somebody uses a particular firearm to commit a horrific act, that company is going to get sued out the wazoo. They're going to probably have to file for bankruptcy. Stop making firearms. Oh, now we're just going to make it to where people, manufacturers won't want to make firearms because they can be sued for it. And there you have it. Backdoor way of banning guns. But moving forward, you know, one of the arguments I would make, I would say, you know, why is it that we don't hold car manufacturers civilly liable when people use their cars to ram into a bunch of people, you know, use it in a drunk driving accident. To which someone would probably say, it's because they're not manufactured to kill people. They're used to transport you. Huh. Right? Full their arms. Checkmate. Let's talk about that with the guns for a second. Guns are not made for the innocent loss of life. Okay? Guns are made to protect innocents. Okay. Guns are made so that you and I can use it for target practice. We can use it for sport or competition shooting. We can use it for hunting. We can use it for life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness and self-preservation against individuals that actually want to harm us. So self-defense. And last but not least, the reason why we have the second amendment in place, the reason why we still produce guns and allow individuals to own these guns is to protect yourself against a tyrannical government. And you can sit there up and down and say, well, the government has all these other guns. They have tanks, they have missiles. It's not the purpose, right? The idea behind the second amendment is you have something to potentially fight back with because you might not be like me, but I'm going to explain to you my point of view. I rather have something than have nothing at all. I rather have a fighting chance than to just sit there and comply. Any other questions? Of course not. Moving on. This is a little bit of a tough one to read, but this kind of just solidifies everything we're talking about. Common sense gun reform, okay? That's really kind of the thing I wanted to uh, hit on this particular slide. Again, media buzzword, common sense, it's common sense, common sense, so everyone can just say that. Oh, wow, well, it's common sense. It makes so much sense. It's really nothing that radical. No, we, well, we, everything that we just went over, we're, you know, the, the whole idea behind America is you're trusted with your liberties. And the government really doesn't grant you those liberties, right? That's supposed to be like a God-given, right? So the whole idea behind government being able to come in and take everything from you is obviously un-American. But like I said, the whole purpose of common sense gun reform, that's just wordplay that they use to persuade people who don't know anything about guns. They just show them pictures of guns. They say, here's a scary black rifle, high capacity magazines, assault rifles, shows it shows it being used in a horrific act. We need to ban them. And of course, like, like I said, people who don't know any better, they're just going to go along with it. So it's up to us to really teach people about, hey, just so you know, the majority of uh, gun crime, it's committed with handguns. Did you know that? It's probably, it's roughly only like 300 deaths a year with uh, rifles. And I'm not trying to sit there and say, well, you know, 300 is a, is a good number. You know, we should have it to where 300 people die a year. No, I would love for that number to be zero. But when you show me 300 deaths a year versus like seven or 8,000, I mean, come on. In the words of Joe Biden, come on, man. But uh, again, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to win anyone over that is so glued to this particular argument on the other side of the aisle. You need to talk to people that are in the middle. They're, you know, kind of undecided on this issue because those are the ones, that's the biggest group of people that are swayed every time there's an election. So that's why it's important we talk to them. But uh, we're going to end with this one. Guys, whatever happens, because I have no idea. I'm hoping, let's say it gets passed, or, or let's say kind of back that up. There's one particular Democrat that is saying he's pro-gun, but uh, 
you know, who knows? We'll have to see. I think it's jo- Joe Manchin. I think that's his name. Uh, you know, I, w- I wish I pulled up his photo, but I just didn't have the time to, you know, put it in the video. But he's a, a Democrat who seems like he's a little more uh, in the middle of the aisle, right? Like liberal Democrat. He's also said he doesn't want to vote to abolish the filibuster, which would mean instead of having, um, you know, a majority, you would only have to have simple majority. So like now, like, for example, with impeachment, you had to have 67 votes. Whereas with simple majority, it would only be 51. So he's actually uh, isn't in favor of making it easier to pass legislation through. He wants it to remain, you know, that like, uh, you know, majority. (laughs) I was going to say majority, majority. I can't even think of exactly how you word it. So he's potentially one that could save the Second Amendment from getting pushed through, you know, to where you'd have more um, restrictions. But let's just say then it gets passed through. Let's say he folds on that. Next thing we have is hopefully the Supreme Court. Hopefully we can get a bunch of appeals working its way through the system and maybe the Supreme Court, you know, shoots down the legislation. Last, come and take it. That's really what it resorts to. You know, you can hear it from so many different people. Freedom isn't free, you know. There's really no other way to put it. At the end of the day, if they're going to say, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them in, you got two options. You can either comply and say, I'll live to fight another day. Or you can say, listen, it's nothing personal, you know, because it's going to have to be police officers or, you know, agents that line up outside your house to kick in your door to take it, right? You just got to say, hey, listen, I know you got a family to go home to. I know you got a job to do, but you know what? I have something that I hold above your job, which is my right to keep and bear arms. And that's kind of the decision you might have to make. So obviously I'm not telling you to go around and do horrific acts, right? Because that's just going to bring negative attention to your, well, you know, the Second Amendment. And obviously you're going to lose your right because you're going to be the idiot that goes out and does something stupid. I'm just talking about worst case scenario. So let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think it's going to get passed? Do you support gun control? Are you against gun control? Uh, You know, let me know your thoughts on this because I think it's going to get put up on the pedestal. And, uh, you know, I can... You know, I'm not leaning towards the good side of this just because they, uh, the Democrats pretty much control everything. And, uh, you know, it's <sighs> – we're just going to have to kind of wait and see. So let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know if I'm right. Let me know if I'm wrong. Totally cool with it. I appreciate you checking out the video. I'll post another one on Friday. But uh, I hope you'll be back again for some more sometime soon.